Um, well, so Little M Media is uh, first my company or whatever it is. I, I uh, have been in and out of agencies for the last probably dozen years working on PR and advertising, public affairs, digital strategy of all types. Um, and I'm now back out on my own, uh, largely because I think you know my role in this whole sort of conversation about the ways that we engage audiences and, and drive behavior shifts or, or disrupt you know, models for business or media or uh, solve issues in society is to, you know, to, to push and provoke new ways of thinking. Um, so I went on on my own, but, but Little M Media to me is the information experiences and stuff that drives all of our behavior. So if you have good, timely, relevant information, if you create experiences that people find valuable, or if you offer stuff, a, a product, if you will, that uh, has meaning or value in people's lives. It doesn't matter if you push it online or offline. It doesn't matter if you, you know, are for profit or nonprofit. You're you're going to have an opportunity to resonate with, you know, an audience that that finds that stuff valuable. So Little M Media is sort of the the core premise of what I think organizations really need to to focus on and specialize in in order to uh, to succeed, regardless. What are of some examples of that? Well, I mean, it, you know, it's it's information of any kind, right? So it might be. Uh, I hate the word storytelling, honestly, because I think storytelling has been turned into this sort of, you know, glossy. If everyone just tells a heart wrenching, uh, you know, personal story of you know, overcoming adversity, then people will just flock to your issue and blah, blah, blah. You know, I think it's, I think it's explanation, I think it's education, I think it's data, uh, analysis, you know, any way that you can shape information to help make people smarter. You know, I found that interesting. In your book, you talked about the four things you need to stop doing. And one of them was organizations uh, promoting and sustaining and growing the organization as opposed to the services or the value to the customers. Now, you know what's so funny I find about that is I feel like nonprofits are worse when it comes to that principle. Absolutely. Why are they so much worse than for profits on it? Why do for profits get it more? Well, I think largely for profits get it because they're product and service driven. So it really doesn't matter what the operation is behind the product. You need people to buy cars or soap or uh, clothes or cereal or whatever it is. Um, so the product takes on the attributes of the brand, takes on the responsibility for um, you know, carrying the personality of the organization with it. For nonprofits organizations uh, and those seeking to solve you know, complex issues in society, you, you can't isolate the conversation, whether it's hunger or poverty or you know, women's rights, whatever it is, you can't isolate one tiny little aspect of a complex issue and, and wrap everything around it. So the fallback is we're going to talk about ourselves. We're going to talk about what we do. We're going to focus on, you know, organizationally keeping the doors open because we know if we are operating that we're going to advance towards fulfilling our mission. But I don't think that that's the correct approach because most of these organizations ultimately end up spending the vast, vast majority of their time keeping their doors open and nothing is being accomplished against the, the issue. There's no solutions actually being conceived of or pursued. There's just a lot of um, sort of operational sustaining going on. You know, it's interesting. So like with the um, Coney campaign that's blowing up right now, uh, some of the blowback has been that they only spend 37% on, of their budget on the actual causes in Africa. And so it seems like that would be a similar kind of, that they're spending a lot to, and even their whole campaign to a certain extent, doesn't it kind of feel like it's promoting um, invisible children? It's right. kind of a way of getting everyone to go promote invisible children like crazy. Well, so I can both defend and criticize what they're doing, right? Yeah. In their defense, you know, one of the things that they're very clear about is that they have a different model than a lot of these other organizations that uh, have a mission to solve a certain problem. They actually see themselves only as a promotional organization. So literally, their job, as they see it, is to run the campaign that makes Coney a superstar, and then their theory of change is the pressure that citizens apply on government will result in you know, the president and Congress making choices to commit the troops necessary to train local rebels and go and catch him.
period. If you buy into that approach, where they have isolated what their impact can be, then what they're doing is genius. Because they have, in fact, found a, a way to use these freely available me me mediums to galvanize a conversation that nobody else has been able to galvanize. Frankly, around almost any issue, period, right? And lo and behold, this is an issue that nobody cares about and nobody understands. Now, my criticism is that's not good enough, right? Because awareness is no longer that difficult to achieve, right? Social media is not something that really, frankly, there is anyone who has a true expertise, sort of the market cornered in how to use it, right? So next week, someone else is going to come along with a creative documentary style movie and a political, you know, sign oriented, you know, marketing effort and get a ton of attention. And the, you know, work of making sure Coney is arrested, making sure that the, the children that he's been kidnapping and turning into child soldiers and things like that are, are you know, released back to their families or released back into the world with the proper support, that's, that's going to fall off the, the global attention you know, list of things that people are paying attention to. So my view is we need to solve these problems. And if you're only able to do the awareness part, that's fine, but you need to be much more clear about what the other dominoes in that chain are. And you need to partner with and assign responsibility to other people so that you see that that entire domino chain fall. Ryan, cool. it's amazing. <laughs>